Hello, I'm Svetlin Nakov from the Software University, SoftUni. I'm your Java programming instructor. I'm here for the next part of my free Java basics coding tutorial, where I teach the basics of programming through a series of video lessons with hands-on coding exercises with the Java programming language. In case you have missed the previous part of this tutorial, please review them to catch up because this lesson is a continuation of the previous lesson, which were about conditional statements. In this lesson, I will talk about advanced conditional statements and how to implement complex control flow logic in your Java code. I will demonstrate how to use nested conditional statements, an if-else which states inside another if-else, and how to use logical operators such as AND, OR, and NOT to build more complex conditions in your conditional statements. I will explain the switch case statement, uh, which is uh, used to make series of checks, and the multi-label switch case statements, and how they help when we check a series of values for the same input. Using all these techniques, we will write complex program logic that corresponds to complex real-world scenarios we can see in our daily lives. As usually, I will finish this lesson with several practical coding problems, which you should solve to gain hands-on experience with writing advanced if-else statements and series of checks. As usually, once you have written the solution for some of the exercises, your code, uh, you will be able to submit it in the judge system for automatic grading and you'll learn whether it's correct or not. This will give you immediate feedback about your code solution. Don't skip the coding exercises. They give you experience and develop your practical skills, which are most important. To learn coding, you should code. That's it. Write code every day and sooner or later you will become a software developer. Just keep coding. And the exercises in this lesson and in, in the other lessons from my series are a great uh, way to train your practical coding skills. Now it's time to start with the lesson. In the marketplace, we have different prices for certain products based on the day of week. So in the weekend, banana are sold by 2.50. And in the weekend, they are more expensive, 2.70. Apples are uh, 1.30 in the weekend, in the weekday, and in the weekend, they are 1.60. Uh, and it's similar for other products and uh, depending on the weekday and weekend. So we want to calculate the price for certain product and date. And this may, might be express, expressed uh, with if-else statements. But how to do this? Uh, it would be something like this. Read the input. Uh, the, what is the product and uh, what is the day of week. So if the product is banana, we have two cases. If it is weekday, the price should be 2.50. Otherwise, the price will be 2.70. If the product is apple, again, we have two cases. If it is a weekday, the price is 1.30. Otherwise, the price is 1.60. And again, if the product is kiwi, we have two cases. If it is weekday, the price is 2.20, otherwise the point is 3.00. So this is subset the code, which explains that sometimes we need a nested if statements. So this is an if statement, but this is another if statement, which happens if the first is true. It's called nested or inner uh, if, if statement. This if statement, happens only if the first is true. So this is how we can express more complex programming logic. Let's see how this happens in programming with Java. So with, with the nested conditions, we may have if-else inside another if-else. How to do this? An if-else statement can be nested within another if-else statement, like it's shown below. We have if expression and we have a block or we may have just a single uh, statement later. In the block we have, if some nested expression, do something, otherwise do something else. So 
if this is true and in the same time this is also true, this code will be executed. If this is true, but this is not true, this code will be executed. So we have more flexibility if we nest, nest if else statements inside other new if else statements. So only if the first condition is true, the nested uh, check will be executed, it will be evaluated. And if it is true, this some code will be executed. Otherwise, this other code will be executed. So the final code is executed when the nested expression is false and the first outside inner uh, outer expression is true. So we can nest this in such a way in at several levels. So we can have if in it we can have another if else inside it we can have another if else. But it's considered that up to three nested levels are okay. Uh, otherwise, the code becomes more uh, unreadable and complex to be understand. So please avoid deep net nesting. How to avoid deep nesting? Uh, usually we use methods. We will uh, learn how to use methods uh, later, but this is the, the way we can avoid it. Just uh, extract a piece of code in a, uh, another method uh, and give uh, a meaningful name. I'll show you this later and some of the next lessons. So let's solve one real world problem, uh, our marketplace. We want to read the product and day from the console and we want to print the price formatted to the second digits uh, after the decimal point uh, based on the, this price table. So banana in the, in the weekday cost 2.50. Uh, banana in the weekend cost 2.17. So we need to check the product and after that check the weekday and with nested statements we can calculate the price. So if the input is the first line holds banana, the second holds weekend, it should be the output should be 2.17. If, if the product is Kiwi and the week uh, and it is weekday, this is the price 2.2. .2. So this is our problem. And I'll solve it. But but first we have a uh, conditional statements Java. This is the previous lesson. So I'll create a new project which will hold uh, the the exercises from my current lesson, uh, which will be called conditional statements advanced conditional statements with a statements advanced. Now it's correct. The base package should be empty. This will simplify our job and I'll open this in the current window. So the project, I have the same thing in, in C sharp. Oh, I, I, so I need to change the name. Sorry. I just, uh, opened a folder which already had some some existing projects. So I'll create a new new project with different name, which will be called um, conditional statements advanced Java. Okay, I believe this is a correct name, which is unique and. Okay, this is the name and these are the files inside the, the files. Okay, in SRC I have main and I'll create a new class. Uh, so I created a project which will hold all my examples and homeworks for this topic, for this lesson, conditional statements advanced with Java. And the first problem is called market place marketplace with capital because this is a class name and it should be with uh, capital and each le each word uh, will be capital for example if it is coffee shop it should be coffee uh, coffee shop each word with capital letter this is the standard naming con convention in java i create the main method and i want to read the product and the day of week. So I'll declare a scanner, uh, control space scanner, accused to new, uh, 
scanner of system system dot in okay i have the scanner so i can read the product so var product equals to scanner dot next uh, one and again i can uh, read the day of week okay so i'm ready with the input i can check the product if the product is banana but this is incorrect in java with eq so i should put dot equals in brackets banana i'll do something otherwise i can check the product i'll take this control c control v and this i will delete it if the product uh shift up here if the product is apple i'll do something else otherwise it's better to do like this ah uh, i have one bracket uh, which is not needed if it is kiwi i'll do something else otherwise i will print uh in in invalid or unknown product the program does not knows uh, this product so if it is banana i can have another check if day day of week day without s day of week is weekday i'll print the price which will be 2.70 i'll print it as a string because otherwise if i print it just as a number i will need to format it with two uh, letters uh, with two digits after decimal point i i want to uh, move my wife uh, make my wife easier so i'll do something like this it's 2.7 2.50 in the weekday banana banana in the weekday is 2.50 otherwise in the weekend is 2.70 okay so the similar logic matches the apple apple apples in the weekday cost how much 1.30 1.30 and otherwise 1.60 in the weekend okay and here i'll need for the kiwi i have 2.2 2.20 and 3.00 3.00 let's try so i want to buy apple in the weekend apples apple in the weekend 1.60 okay uh what's next uh i can try kiwi in the weekday okay it's the point two i can try banana banana in the weekend it's 2.7 so this is how it works i have if which holds other if if which holds other if so i can just uh, i can split this but but it's very ugly uh, no this this will not work well uh, but generally i have if it holds if i have else if it holds another if i have else if it holds another if here i may have like this a block and i may have other if if something print this otherwise print this so this is how 
I can have deeper nesting. Okay. Okay, so this is how marketplace could be solved and this is what uh, the solution I had in mind before the start of um, my lesson. Uh, if the day of week is week, weekday, for banana is 2.50, otherwise 2.70. If the product is apple, for weekday I have one price, I, otherwise if it's not weekday I have a, another price. I do the same for kiwi, etc, etc, etc. So the biggest number of three this is our next problem it's about writing a program that reads three numbers from the console and prints the biggest of them wow it's a little bit more complex so if i have one to three three is biggest if i have minus one minus five minus uh, nine minus one is the biggest obviously if i have one five three five is biggest if i have 0 0.5 1.5 minus three 1.5 is the biggest so how to solve this problem okay I'll create a new Java class which will be called biggest number of biggest of three numbers this name is good enough because it says what inside biggest of some three numbers okay here I'll take this line of code because I don't want to write it again i will write main we'll import java to scanner and i'll say something like double num1 equals to uh, scanner dot next double and i'll have num1 num2 num3 and i'll check if num1 is bigger than num2 this means that num1 num2 is not the biggest right so this says nothing i'll need another if if in the same time num2 is bigger than num3 what this says this says that the num1 is the biggest do you agree num1 for example 10 is bigger than num2 for example 5 but num2 is bigger than num num3 for example 2 so which is the biggest num1 okay but this is just one of the case otherwise what we have here otherwise num3 here num3 is bigger or equal than num2 and in the same time in the same time num1 is bigger or equal than num2 we can say nothing we need another if here because it's not clear uh, which one is bigger it might be either num3 or either num1 so hmm, this is not good uh, okay what about this logic if num1 is bigger than num2 and num1 is bigger than num3 it, this num1 is bigger by both num2 or 3 so it's the biggest for example this is 10 this is 7 this is 5 and otherwise what will happen because num1 is bigger than num2 and in the same time num1 num3 is bigger or equal to num1 which is bigger than num2 what happens here num3 is the biggest do you agree let's give an example num1 for example 10 
is bigger by num2, for example, 5. And num1 is not bigger by the num3, uh, num3. For example, this is 12 num because this is 10. So which is the biggest? The num3. Because num3 is bigger or equal than num1 because it's else, the opposite. The opposite of this is this. This is the opposite here. So if this happens and in the same time this happens, it's obvious that the num3 is the biggest. Do you agree? I believe it's correct. But here, else, what we have here, if we go at the else, this means that this is not true. This means that num1, num2 is bigger or equal than num1. So, if in the same time num2 is bigger or uh, than num3, what happens? num2 is, for example, 10 is bigger or equal than num1, for example, 5. And in the same time, this 10 is bigger than num3, for example, 3. Which is the biggest? num2. So here, I will print num2. Otherwise, what happens? num3 is bigger, num3 is bigger or equal to num2. And in the same time, we have this. Both are correct. So, this means this. Okay? It's the same. So, which one is the biggest? Num3. Okay? Do you agree? I believe so. And this should work correct. Let me check whether it's correct or not. Oh, go, go away. I will try 10, 20, 30. 30 is the biggest. I agree. 30, 20, 10. 30 is the biggest. And 20, 10. 20, 30, 10. 30 is the biggest. So I had the first, the second, and the third. So I, if I have one, two, three, the last. If I have one, three, two, is the middle. And if I have three to one, it's the first. I covered all the cases, in fact. And maybe I should type five, 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 but it's five. I should try negatives, minus 1.5, 0 0.5, minus 15, 0 0.5 is the biggest. Looks like it works correctly. So this was a little bit more complex logic. Yes, it is more complex logic because we still didn't uh, have learned about the AND operator because if this is true. This would be more easier to, to read. Do you agree? If num1 is bigger or equal to num2, which is bigger or equal to num3, then it is num1. How to write this? It should be like this. And this is the first case. My second case might be this. Num2 is bigger than num1 and num2 is bigger than num3. Uh, oh, this is the case. Num1 is bigger by both num2 or 3. So it's the biggest. Num2 is bigger by both num1 and num3. So it's num2. And the third case is that num3 is biggest, bigger by both 
of them. This is the second solution and this will work also well. But we have didn't uh, we didn't have already learned how to use this and operator. I will talk about it a little bit later. So let's go back with our nested if statements based solution. This is a solution based on nested statements. This one. And it's completely correct. Okay. So the solution I had in mind before the start of this lesson is check whether the first is biggest by the second. If the first is in the same time biggest by the third, it's true that first is bigger by both second and third. Otherwise, the third is bigger than first and which is bigger than the second. So the third is the biggest. Otherwise, we have that the second is bigger than the first because it's the opposite, the opposite of this. And in the same time, I have second bigger than the third. So second is bigger than both first or third or equal, but this doesn't matter. And otherwise, the third is bigger than the second because this is not true. And in the same time, the second is bigger than the first because this is not true. So third is the biggest. This is exactly the solution I had, but I didn't name my variables num1, num2, num3, but first, second, third. It's the same solution. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, try to solve this yourself because it's a little bit more complex logic than the, the things we already mentioned in our, in our previous lessons. So in programming, we often have some non-trivial um, things that we should just uh, be smart and um, think of and invent them. So this is called algorithmical thinking to come up with a correct idea to solve certain problem. Okay, let's go ahead with the so-called logical operators. This not and or Operators which allow us to build more complex conditional statements, more complex conditional statement logic, to check more complex conditions. Uh, sometimes we we often use logical conditions. Things like check whether the minutes are less than 60 or check if the price is bigger than 1.50. This is called a logical check or logical condition. But this is a simple logical condition. Just value operator another value. Value well, comparison operator another value. But what will happen if you want to check several conditions in the same time? Check whether the minutes are less than 60 and in the same time the price is bigger than 150. Or if the first is bigger by the second and in the same time the first is bigger, bigger than the third. This is uh, an example of more complex logical operators. So the logical operators in Java uh, combine several conditions. They can be combined with the AND logic, logical AND or the double ampersand operator. It says the first condition and the second condition. I'll show you how this works. Logical or either the first or the same or both. This is called or. Uh, let me give you a real world example for hand. If I'm a male and in the same time, if I'm my age is over 21, I can enter in the certain night group alone, for example, if both conditions are in the same time true. Or if I'm uh, over 21 years old, or I'm not, I come with old person, I can enter in a certain group. To enter in certain group, I should either, either be old, 
of age more than 21 years, or I should come together with someone which is old. This is or, watch go or. And not means if I'm not under 21 years, I can drink beer. For example, logical negation. Uh, also, we may have brackets. Brackets change the order of execution. Uh, and this is just when we don't know the exact priority. I'll show you how to use the brackets. But they're just like in math. In math, uh, the multiplication has mm, higher order of execution than plus and, and minus. So we can use brackets to change the order. It's the same applies for Boolean expressions and logical operators. So the logical and this operator ampersand ampersand double ampersand, it's true when both conditions are true in the same time. So if I'm old enough and if I signed an agreement, I can purchase, for example, a car. I should have 21 years and I ha should sign some documents, I can purchase a car. Both conditions should be true in the same time. The OR logic is like this. If the first condition is false but the second is true, the OR means one of them, so it will be true. If the first is true and the second is false, the OR condition will be true. So. If I'm old or come together with someone who is old, I'm allowed to enter in the club. It is in Java, uh, the vertical, two vertical lines. This is called OR, logical OR. Uh, but the OR works if both conditions are true. If I'm old and I come together with a friend who is also old, I will also be allowed to enter in the club. Okay? And negation means the opposite of something. So if I'm not under 21, if I'm 21, if I'm less, if my age is less than 21, I'm not old, I'm young, okay? But if I'm not under 21, I'm considered old. This is a negation. This is the exclamation mark operator in Java. I'll show you how this works in practice with some code. This is an example of Boolean expression which returns true if all the operands are true. Assume this, uh, this problem here. Uh, sorry. I have a point x, y. And this point is inside this rectangle if four conditions are true in the same time. It is on the right from this x1. It is on the left from this x2. It is on the down from this y1. And it is on the up of this. So, if it is on the right from this side and on the down from this side and on the left from this side, and on the up from this side, if these four conditions are true in the same time, this point is inside this rectangle. Do you agree? Yes, it's true. So, if the position x of this point is on the right from x1, this, the right from here, and in the same time, if x is less than x2, which means this is x2, 12, this is 12, left from here, less than x2, and it is bigger than y1, which means this, and it is less than y2, which means this, if all of them are in the same time, this means that it's inside. So this is a very good example how to use AND, logical AND. Another example is to write a program which adds bonus, po bonus points uh, to, to give a uh, number. So we have achieved some result and if the result is from 0 to 3, we add 5 bonus points. If the result is from 
4 to 6, we add 15 additional bonus points. If the points are between 7 and 9, we add 20 additional point bonus points. So this is how this can be implemented. If we have 4 points, we add more 15 and our result is 19. How this can be result, uh, implemented? Bonus points. We read the bonus points. If the points are from 0 to 3, we add 5. Otherwise, if points are from 6 to from 4 to 6, which means the points are bigger than or equals to force, and in the same times, bonus points are less than or equal to 6. This means that we have range 4 to 6. This is how we express this in Java. Okay, I will uh, create a class called bonus points and in the main I'll take this scanner from here control tab switch to the next uh, editor to the next to the next file which is already open uh, I'll read the, the points uh, double points equals to scanner dot next double and now if the points are between 0 and 3, I between 0, bigger than 0, and points are less than or equal to 3, then I add 5 points. Otherwise, if Otherwise, it, it, I have something very similar, so I copy this. If they are from 4 to 6, I will add 15 bonus points, right? If they are from 7 to 9, I will add 20 more points and finally I'll print the final result what will happen if I have 4.3 points 4.3 4.3 falls here so plus 15 I will have 19.3 what will happen if I have 0 0.7 with more 5, I have 5.7. What if I have 9 points? More 20, I will have 29. What if I have 0 points? I will have 5. What will happen if I have 100 points? I will stay with the same because there is no bonus for this range. This is how the logical AND works. It checks the first condition AND second condition and third condition etc 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 so this is the solution of the problem i already demonstrated to you so let's go ahead to discuss the logical or operator the logical or operator is some operator whether the result of the expression is true if one of the operands is true or both of the operands or left operand or right operand is true. If one of the members of this OR expression is true, the entire expression result is true. Otherwise, it's false. So, if S is T or S is water, this will be true. I don't need this. Uh, if S is T or S is water. So, Let's solve this problem. Check for food or drink. Whether something is food or drink. Uh, we read a single line and print drink, food or unknown. We consider that the foods are curry, noodles, sushi and spaghetti. That's all, only four types of food. And drinks are tea, coffee and water. Okay? So, everything else is unknown. How to solve this? This is called food or drink okay 
I'll copy this, control C, control V, food or drink. Okay. And I'll start from this template. I'll have a string with capital uh, S equals to scanner dot next one. S is our input or item, for example. It might be item. If the item is curry, okay, or the item is noodles. I'll copy this or the item is sushi. I think I don't need this, but what will happen? Oh, it's too long. The line is too long, so it's better to split it. Maybe like this. Maybe like this. Or the item uh, IntelliJ idea wants this to be formatted in certain manner. Uh, yeah, sushi, and finally I should check spaghetti for spaghetti. If one of this, this or this or this or this happens, I'll print food okay I'll print this is food otherwise I'll check for this I'll check for water or tea or coffee and if one of them happens I need to break it here closing I'll say that this is drink otherwise I'll say that this is unknown let's check whether this works so in these four cases I'll print food in these three cases, I'll print drink. In all other cases, I'll print a noun. Let me check whether this works. I have tea. It's drink. Okay, I have water. It's drink. Okay, I have noodles. It's food. I have sushi. It's food. I have a banana. It's unknown because the program doesn't know this one. So this is the solution and this is how it works here. It's very, very similar without the, the blocks with opening and closing curly brackets, but it's essentially the same solution, just a little bit more less code. Okay, so let's demonstrate the watch go not. The logical negation or not returns true when the operand is false and false when the operand is true. So it inverts the, the, the value. Here is an example. We want to check for a valid number. By definition, a number is valid if it is in the range from 100 to 200 or in the special case where the, va valid, the value is zero. So. Valid numbers are 0, 100, 101, 102, etc. until 200. So we have a little bit more complex expression. So is valid, Boolean is valid, is this num is bigger than 100 and in the same time num is bigger than 200, this thing or the num is 0. See, we may have here brackets also. But exclamation is valid 
means invalid. So if the number is not valid, it's invalid, <laughs> right? So if it's false that the number is valid, this means that the number is invalid. It's the opposite of valid. So this is how this works. Uh, I'll say uh, implement this also. Uh, valid number check, for example, it would be something like main. I'll have this on oh, the scanner. I'll take this because I don't want to write it again. Control V with the import. So I'll have a number var num equals to uh, scanner dot next table. Okay. And now boolean valid equals to the following num is let me see the range from 100 to 200 num is bigger than or equal to 100 and in the same time num is less than or equal to 200 this means that it is in this range or or this happens num is zero if one of these cases happens the value is valid if the value is not valid print sorry invalid value okay i'll run this to show you Five, it's invalid value. One hundred, it's valid. One hundred fifty, it's valid. Two hundred, it's valid. Zero, is valid. Two hundred one, invalid. Fifty, invalid. So do you understand the logic? We can have this. So. I can use this. I can have if brackets and this. What I wrote here is please check whether the number is between 100 and 200 or it's zero and use the opposite of this. The opposite of this. And if this happens, say that the value is invalid. For example, 50, it's invalid, but it's better to split this complex condition into two more simple. This is highly more readable. It's much more understandable code. So prefer this code. It's called self-documenting, self-explaining code, because you say it's valid when this or this happens if not valid print this the other complex condition in the if was hard to understand okay let's go ahead with the next section for our lesson it's called switch case switch case is a special operator similar to if else if else which was checking for multiple values for the same input so we we check something for example the age of certain person and if the age is five years we print something if the age is 20 years we print in something else if the age is 10 years we print something else this is a, a way to check the same put for multiple values this is how this works it's used for choosing among a list of possibilities alternatively to if else we have switch we write switch and in brackets we use the selector, which is an expression. For example, age. Switch of age. Okay, I cannot type this. Uh, uh, switch of age. And if the age is, for example, here, 20, do something. Break. Otherwise, check. We may have many cases, many such cases default 
do something. I will demonstrate this. So this is main. I have uh, string day is is five, for example. Uh, int switch of day and if the day is one case in case of one I will print in case of one I will print Monday and I will break it's not like this you don't have this it starts with you always have break and you always have multiple lines. Just the syntax is a little bit strange. Case two. The second day is Thursday. Break. Etc. And default by default. I'll say unknown day. I will need finish the other days. Okay. So what's the idea here? If the day is two, it's Monday. It's Tuesday. Okay. If the day is one. It is Monday. If I skip this break here, this doesn't work correctly. Do you see? Because in case of one, this will happen. But without break, this will continue. So in case of one, this will go here. So you need to put break after these cases except the default otherwise it will not work correctly it's similar to if day is one ten print monday sorry monday else if day is two, then print Thursday, else print noun day. So this and this do the same. But here it's more clear that we check the different possibilities for this day. Here, we may have more complex and different expressions. So when to use switch? When we have the same expression and we choose for multiple values. Or it's a matter of personal preference. Some people use only if else and never use switch, but switch is sometimes more powerful and more, more convenient. So this is an example. We print yes or no. We print something if the value is y, we print yes. If the value is n, we print no. Otherwise, we print invalid response. Uh, this is the example. Print yes, no. Yes, no. I mean, control space. And I will need this scanner here, control C. So I run this code. I run choice. I press Y, it's yes. I press N, it's no. But if I press Y with small, it doesn't work. It's invalid response. Okay. But what I can do here is to have multiple labels. In case of yes, or yes and in case of no small or no we print no so this will work slightly better okay 
yes it's yes why pick it's yes no it's no and m is no but if i print yes it's invalid so i can say that the choice is equals to choice dot to our case and i will need just these two cases because if i switch the big big letters into smaller here by this one of course to 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 our case okay so if i have y it's yes if i have y it's yes but still if it is yes it does it doesn't work so i can have that choice is choice thought substring of zero one which means take the from the letter at position zero one letter let me check whether this works correctly yes works why works why works no it's no <laughs> now this works better you can play a lot with this so this is the scenario to use switch case we may have switch and many cases and we may have default which is something like the final way else we may have multiple labels in the switch case and i already demonstrated this because we may have the same action for several values uh, this is an example switch selector case first value second value third value some statements and break default some statements and break this is an example animal in case of animal is dog or cat or something it's mammal okay otherwise it's a noun so in case it's uh, for example eagle and uh, pigeon it's bird i may have this uh, for example species biological species name so scanner scanner equals new scanner of system dot in and this animal if it is dog cat or for example frog it's mammal ah the frog i'm not sure for example uh, horse the horse is mammal and in the same time i may have uh, eagle pigeon and some okay just these two it's bird otherwise it's a noun switch of animal okay i can rename this animals okay so pigeon it's bird do you know what is pigeon it's very easy to find this just this one this bird is called pigeon this is eagle do you know it the eagle uh, you can check the others so this is the concept let me run it again and try for example uh cat uh what's well what's well it's incredibly slow but once it runs it runs better once it's compiled so if i use for example uh, i don't know uh, some animal frog it's a now okay so this is the concept of multiple labels inside the switch case it's really useful and this was all of the new content i have 
had in mind for today. So it's your time to solve some problems based on the new skills we learned today. Because learning programming is only possible by coding. Just writing code, writing code, writing code, solving problems. So it's your time to practice the coding exercises. Please do your best to solve these exercises, which are in the learning system in the homework section. And I will be back in a few minutes to help you and to show you my solutions. So go ahead, I'll be back. Hello again. Now I will help you to solve the problems you had to practice uh, for your practice co practical coding exercises. And I will start from the first problem, which is called fruit or vegetable. It's a, about writing a program to check for fruit or vegetable. Um, it reads a single line of text. Uh, it might be either fruit or vegetable. Um, so we consider that fruits are banana, apple, kiwi, cherry, lemon and grapes. And vegetables are cucumber, pepper and carrot. And everything else is a noun. So it just needs to read some um, input to check whether it is uh, among the, um, these fruits or vegetables and print either fruit or vegetable or a noun. This is an example. If we enter lemon, it should produce fruit. If we enter carrot, we should produce vegetable. If we enter, for example, coffee, it should uh, print uh, a noun. Okay. So let's do this fruit or vegetable. I will open the IntelliJ idea uh, where I have a project about the conditional statements advanced lesson. And in the source folder, I'll create a new class, new Java class, which is called fruit, fruit or vegetable. Okay. Inside this class, I'll have main. I will open uh, some of the previous um, classes just to copy uh, this line of code, which imports the scanner class. And now I'm ready to read my input. The input will be something like a string uh, item is equals to scanner dot next line. It's an item. So if the item is dot equals, I think we cannot use switch because uh, switch doesn't work for strings. But let's see if items equal banana per banana what was the banana apple kiwi cherry lemon grapes oh it's a product product is a better name is the product is banana or the product is apple then kiwi, then cherry, lemon, oh, copy paste doesn't work well always, kiwi, cherry, lemon, grapes, cherry, lemon, and finally I should check for grapes. If this happens, I will print that this is fraud. Otherwise, I'll have some other checks like, well, uh, control V. So I copied this in order to write it faster. It's cucumber, pepper, cucumber, pepper. And carrot. In this case, I print vegetable. Finally, I print noun. 
this is the entire program the entire code i think it's correct but let's see i'll start it run fruits or fruit or vegetable it's compiling it's doing it sometimes so banana banana is fruit okay thank you so lemon lemon is fruit i agree but what about cucumber it's vegetable but what about water water is a noun okay pepper maybe this should be with double p uh, yes it is with double p uh, so we are done with this program and let's see the solution i had in mind before the lesson it's with switch mm. switch like this and I should check whether this works. I'm not sure that this works because I'm not sure that switch works for for strings. We can check in Google. Java switch for string. Okay, switch string in switch in Java. Oh, this works from Java 7. So it looks that it's it should work yes as from java 7 they have implemented this one so i can do something like switch of product if this cucumber pepper or carrot is a vegetable mm. oh sorry control c control v if it is banana kiwi lemon cherry grapes cherry grapes banana kiwi lemon cherry grapes banana ah apple i am <laughs> also apple then this is fruit other white fault it is in the default case it is now I don't need break here it shall work but I don't need it because here the statement ends the case now I run for example this program and I enter Apple my first solution says fruit and my second solution says also fruit if I enter T both solutions say a noun so this is the switch case it looks better to be honest than this one okay so this is the solution i had in mind before the start of this lesson and i have demonstrated you how to use it okay let's go with the next problem which is called day of week it's about writing a program to display the day of week as words so if we are given two it should be Tuesday if we are given three it should be Wednesday so it should read an integer n which is the day of week in the range from 1 to 7 and prints the name of the days as words in English it's assumed that the first day in the week is Monday which is not everywhere in the world but we assume this like it is in Europe so prints error if the number is not in the given range uh, this is an example one means monday nine means error and seven means sunday okay so let's solve this problem it's called day of week new java class day of week okay control tab goes here and i will copy some of the code from the previous problem and it would be something like uh, please read the next int in the variable called day and I will switch of day and in case of one I will print Monday and I'll take a break <laughs> I'll, I'll exit from the switch I should have one, two, 
Tuesday 3, Wednesday works correct. 4 is Thursday. 5 is Friday. Oh, my favorite day. 6 is Saturday. And 7 is Sunday. And the default is, it should be on the left, is error. Let's run this. So this is the entire code. You can see it. The entire program. We have written 33 lines of code. Wow. So today we wrote a few hundred lines of code. If we combine all the code we wrote together. So if you want to become a developer, you need to have a few 100,000 lines of code looks good. This mean, means 1,000 days per few hundred lines of code or more intensively. But let's go here. 3 is Wednesday, 0 is error, and 7 is Sunday, and 1 is Monday. Works correct, so we can go ahead with the next uh, problem. This is the solution I had in mind before the start. It's exactly what I already implemented here. So let's go ahead with the next problem. The next problem is called vowel or consonant. It's about writing a program to check a letter for vowel or consonant. So we read a letter from the English alphabet as input and we print either vowel or consonant. Or it might be different, but we assume that if it's not vowel, it's consonant. It's unclear what will happen if we uh, enter the dollar sign or space, but we assume the input is correct. So A, E, I are vowels, okay? They can be capitals or uh, small letters and X, Z and B are consonant. So this is the problem. We again create a new class which will be called vowel or consonant. Okay, vowel. Okay, works correct. I'll create my main method, the entrance for this program. Uh, this program, I'll copy this scanner uh, from another class I have already written today uh, to save some time. And I will say something like uh, string letter equals to scanner dot next next. Do I have next char? I don't have. So I'll, I'll take the next one. Then it's good to have letter is equal to letter dot to lowercase. This means that uh, capital letters will be turned to small letters. And now. I can say something like switch and I can say also that letter is letter. No, it, if, uh, it's unclear what will happen when we uh, write several letters together. For example, if we enter hello, because we are allowed to enter hello, uh, we might take just the first letter or the program will not work correctly. But we can say something like if the letter is uh, oh, we can uh, say like this input. This is the input. Input but char letter equals to input dot char at zero position, which means dot take the first I don't have uh, the first but this is the first character okay this is what we can do with strings because this is string but generally uh, we can just take 
char at position 0. So this is the letter. And now the letter is a, is a character. For example, it might be A or it might be, for example, A, O, it might be also I, U, and what were the other constant vowels? We can check in internet <laughs> if we can't remember them. Vowels in English. Okay, so vowel letters are A, E, I, O, U. There are five. I have forgotten the E. This E. Okay, I'm ready. And I'll print vowel because this is what is required from me with capital letter. Otherwise, I'll print consonant. And that's all. Let's check whether this runs correctly or not. I will enter A, it's full. I will enter S, it's consonant. I will read enter E, capital, vowel, and uh, T, T, capital, consonant. And if I enter hello, it's consonant. If I enter apple, it's vowel, because it takes just the first letter, only this first letter. Uh, whether this is correct or not, it's a matter of definition. But we can go ahead and this is what I had uh, in mind before the start of this lesson. I had prepared to take the char at position zero because if we have a string like, uh, for example, hello, we have this at position zero, this at position one, etc. So each letter is numbered, which is natural. So we have the letter and we can check for vowel or consonant or we can say dot to lower case like we did here, uh, dot to lower case and this to lower case uh, will allow us to check just these letters instead of all the letters. Okay, and finally, in all other cases, when we don't have a vowel, we consider the input is consonant. Okay, the next problem is called product of three numbers. We need to calculate the sign of the product of three numbers. Uh, not the product, but the sign. For example, if we have, uh, if we have uh, three multiplied by minus 5 multiplied by 2 this is in fact minus 30 so the sign is negative right and if we have 1 multiplied by 2 by 3 it is 6 and it is positive and if we have 0 multiplied by 4.5 multiplied by 3 it's 0 and the sign is zero. Okay, we enter three floating point numbers and we print positive, negative, or zero. Uh, we can do this with by multiplying the numbers or without multiplying the numbers by considering that if we have odd number of negatives, the result will be negative. If we have one of the product zero, the number will be zero, and otherwise it will be positive. Okay, it's called product of three numbers. Uh, okay, new Java class. Product of three numbers. In this product of three numbers, I have the main, control V. Oh no, I don't have the scanner in the, in the clipboard, but now I have it. 
I have taken this from the other class and now I'll read the numbers. Uh, dub, double num1 equals to scanner dot next. Next double num1 to two and three. And I'll do something like this uh, double product equals to num1 multiplied by product equals to num1 multiplied by num2 multiplied by num3 and if product is 0 print 0 otherwise I'll have as if it is positive I'll print positive. It is less than zero. I'll print negative. Let me check whether this runs. Three, four, five, positive. Thirty, zero minus zero point five. It's zero. Minus zero point five. One point five. Three. It's negative. Minus 1, minus 1, minus 1. It's negative. And minus 1, 3, minus 1. It's positive. Hmm. Works, it works correctly. But this is the solution where we uh, multiply the product. I'll have another solution. Which is something like this. We can count the number of negative numbers. So, int count of negatives is zero if num1 is less than zero then i will increase the count of negatives okay i'll do the same for num2 and for num3 and now i know how many negative numbers i have if they are odd number the the final product will be negative but if we have zero this is a special case so if num1 is zero or num2 is zero or num3 is zero then this is zero Otherwise, if the count of negatives is odd number, which means percent two is one, I'll print negative. I'll have, for example, minus one, five, five. I have one negative number. So if, if I have one or three negative numbers, the result will be negative unless it is zero. Okay. And finally, it should be the last case, positive number. Positive. This is our second solution. This is our first solution. I have two separate solutions for the same problem. Okay. Let's check whether these both solutions give the same result. Uh, 3, 4, 5. It's positive. Okay. I run this. What happens? Minus 2, 4, minus 2. Positive. I have 3, 4, minus 2. Negative. Minus 2, 3.5, 0. It's 0. Looks like... They work both, both solutions work correctly so we are done with this problem this is the solution i had in mind before the start of this lesson it was about checking whether we have zero if we have zero if one of the input numbers is zero the final product will be zero otherwise we count the negatives how many negative numbers we have among the input numbers and if they are 
even we have positive otherwise we have negative product that's all about this problem so let's go ahead with the next problem the next problem is called sorted numbers uh, the goal here is to write a program which checks whether a given series of numbers uh, are sorted or not, are arranged in increased, in, in non-decreased sync order or not. So we read three numbers and we print ascending if the numbers are in ascending order. We print descending if the numbers are in descending order and not sorted in any other case. So one to three is ascending and 3, 1, 2 is not sorted. 1, 1, 2 is also ascending. I, I, this is my, because it's not well explained here that 1, 1, 2 is still ascending. So I believe that if we have A less than or equal B less than or equal C, this means that the sequence A, B, C is ascending okay so that's all we have. we read three numbers and we do this oh we already have this i will copy paste this class control c control v it will be called ascending numbers or sorted check for sorted numbers this looks better and I will take the first part here where I read these three numbers. So what I can do, I can check whether if num1 is less than or equal to num2 and in the same time num2 is less than or equal to num3. It's in math we can write like this but in Java we can't. So we should do this, which is exactly the same. In this case, I will write ascending. So for example, I have here five. I have something bigger or equal than five, for example, again five. And here I have seven, it's ascending. It, it is descending if If I have num1 bigger than num2 and num2 bigger than num3, in fact, it, it might be ascending and descending in the same time if the values are 1, 1, 1, for example. But I assume that hmm, we should define this better. Strongly ascending or non descending, right? Uh, and else, finally, I'll print not sorted. It depends on the definition, whether it's, uh, it allows uh, equal, equality or not. I will consider the numbers are ascending if they are strongly ascending. For example, 5, 10, 20. 5, 5, 10, it's not sorted. But it's a... Uh, matter of interpretation of the pro problem statement. Let's check whether this works or not. Okay, mm, I'm waiting for the compilations. 10, 20, 30, it's ascending. If we have 30, 20, 1.5, it's descending. If we have 20, 30, 5, it's not sorted works correct so let's see the original solution we had oh it's exactly the same and it is strongly uh, with the strongly ascending and strongly des descending problem definition okay we're done with this problem so we can go ahead with the next one the next one is called vacation expenses it's about writing a program which calculates a vacation expenses it reads season accommodation type and count of days and prints the total extend, uh, expenses based on this table below. So, for example, if we have uh, summer and we have camping, the mm, rate per day 
is this 30 we don't have this count so we have uh, the count of days for example five days multiplied by 30 it would be uh, 150 but if we have for example uh, autumn and hotel okay the season is autumn the accommodation type is hotel the rate is 20 but we have 30 percent discount so the rate is 20 by 0 0.7 do you agree it is 1.0 minus 30 percent uh, it's 70 percent of this 20 multiplied by the number of days for example it might be five so this is how this works uh, we don't have example here oh it's a big mistake in this problem but we should format the output uh, up to two digits after the decimal point okay so let's see here uh evocation expenses okay new java class vacation expenses again i will need the main method i will need the control tab this scanner control tab control v enter okay and once i have the scanner i can read from it uh, the input the input is the season string season equals to scanner dot next next line uh, the next thing i read is the accommodation accommodation hmm, it's with double m and then i read the number of days it would be int uh, dot next int it's taste so now i'll do something like if the season is spring it's better to have this dot to lower case in order to be able to handle uppercase and lowercase so i'll have now spring with small letters and spring with, with capitals will also work okay so if the season is spring what we shall do the season is spring so if the hotel if it is hotel if accommodation is hotel then maybe i will need a rate in this case the rate will be what i have spring hotel 30 but with the 20 percent discount 30 multiplied by 0 0.8 otherwise if it is camping the rate will be 10 with 10 with the discount this is for spring in the same manner we can handle with else if summer okay in the summer hotel 50 30 without discount it's 50 and 30 without any discount okay autumn i can handle in the similar way autumn autumn hotel 20 15 and 30 discount 30 discount piece 0 0.7 20 15 2015 with 30% discount finally if it is winter 
40, 10. It's 40 with 10% discount. It's something quite good. This and 10 with 10% discount is this number. I may have this. And now I can print the rate, the uh, double what I should expenses. I should calculate the expenses. They are rate multiplied by the days, the number of days. And I need to print format it with the second digits after the decimal point. Uh, so I need to print F the uh, percent of to F this with new one, this expenses. I can say something like And let me check whether this works because it's not very. This may be done with switch. Okay, I agree, but I don't like it. So let's run this. And we shall enter this. What will happen if we are in the spring? at whole hotel for seven days one six eight spring hotel spring hotel is 30 uh, i'll run the calculator so spring hotel is 30 multiplied by seven days is this but we have 20 percent discount so by 0 0.8 it 168.00 hmm. works correct again if we are for example autumn 15 days days for for three days uh autumn at sorry i'll need to stop and restart autumn at camping for three days autumn camping for three days is 45 multiplied by 0 point with 30 percent it's 3150 looks like it's correct the the logic is correct if i have mistake here at some of the numbers okay forgive me uh, but the logic here is correct and it's a good example of nested nested if three nested four nested if statements which handle these four basic cases and four inner cases subcases okay this is the solution i had in mind before the start of this lesson i read the season i read the accommodation i read the number of days and later if it is spring i check for hotel and calculate the total price like this days multiplied by the rate by discount uh, and later I if it is camping I do similar calculation I do the same for uh, summer for autumn and for winter and finally I print the total price formatted as it, it is expected by the problem statement okay let's go ahead with the next problem it's called cinema it's about calculating the price for all tickets for a cinema movie, uh, the program should read the type of the movie, the rows and the seats per row in the cinema, and it should calculate all the price for all tickets. If all tickets are sold, what will be the price? So depending on the type of the ticket, uh, the, the type of the projection of the entire um, movie, we have different prices premiere 12 normal 7.5 and discount tickets are five so uh, this is price for one seat so if you have normal 12 uh, 12 rows and nine seats per row we have this uh, we have two 
normal 7.5 see 7.7.5 multiplied by 12 multiplied by 9 multiplied by 12 multiplied by 9 it is 810.00 and the output should be formatted with two digits after the decimal point so this is very similar so I'll copy vacation expenses and this will be called cinema uh, so I read the um, type rows and see its parole I read type rows integer dot par scanner next line and see it's per row and if the type I'll have to lower case here and if the projection is normal okay uh, price per seed will be 7.50 so I'll have something like double price per seed or ticket price ticket price looks better ticket price will be 7.5 for normal else for prim premier premier it's 12.00 and otherwise it's normal and the ticket price will be no it's discounted it would be 5 okay so I have the ticket price and if I have the ticket price I can calculate the total price which will be the ticket price multiplied by the mm, number of rows multiplied by the seats per row again we by design we want to calculate how many uh, if all the tickets are sold what will be the incomes it will be something like total incomes are these incomes let's check whether this works correctly this is the entire solution I'm not sure whether this will work correctly but let's see normal 12 9 normal 12 9 810.00 ah, looks correct and premiere 2030 7, looks correct so we can go ahead this is the solution I had in mind I read the input data I calculate the number of seats and if the type is premiere I print the seats multiplied by 10 and format it correctly again if it is normal I will print the seats multiplied by other price and I just have to check these three cases premiere normal and discounted ticket and to multiply by different number which is the ticket price so we are ready with the cinema problem and we can go ahead with the number operations problem which is about writing a problem to evaluate operations which reads two real number and math operator from the console math operators are plus minus multiplication division and uh, percent which is the reminder of division and to apply this operator with the given numbers this is the example which explains the problem better so if we have 10 12 and plus we need to calculate 10 plus 12 if we have 
10, 12 and percent, we need to calculate 10 percent 12. And this is the output. The first number goes here, the second number goes here, and the third number. Uh, and the result of first operator second goes here. Number one operator number two equals to the result where the result is this, the operator this. Okay, so how to cook, how to run this? We can just read the input and check if the operator is plus, sum the numbers. If the operator is minus, um, calculate the subtraction. If the operator is plus, is multiplication, is the star, multiply, etc., etc., etc. So let's go ahead. To solve this problem, it's called number operations. Operations works correct. So I'll have the main method here. Main method. I'll have the scanner here. Control C, Control V. I pressed Control Tab to go to the next uh, window, or the previous window, Control Tab, and Control Tab back. <laughs> I copy this line, Control C, Control Tab, Control V, and this is how I have the scanner in less time. Okay, so next I'll read the first number, double, num1, equals to scanner dot next. Next double. Uh -huh. Then I read the num2. And then I'll read, okay, n1 operator n2. Uh -huh. I need to read here the operator the scanner dot. By the way, I have a mistake here, but I will explain this later. This will not work, think why. Uh, but let's do something like if operator is plus, then print what we need n1 percent. S, for example, percent S, the operator percent S equals percent S. Or, yeah, this will work correctly. It's not explained at which format we should do this, so we can just do, do this. Or maybe percent %f will work better, I'm not sure, but, but this should be num1, num2, num1 plus num2. Print f slash n. I'm not sure about this, so I will run the program when still it is unfinished to check whether it works correctly okay so i run number one five operator plus oh i have exception it's hard to understand what's here but the problem is that if we read next double uh this next one will not no longer work so we should use next one and double dot parse sorry so be careful when you mix reading numbers and reading strings if you read strings later you can read numbers but if you read numbers later you can't read strings so you should either read only strings 
or do something else but in this case it's just the easier way is to read the first one read the second one read the last the third one and parse this to double parse this to string parse this to double let's try again and see what happens okay so if we have 5 plus 10 wow 5 plus 10 is 15 no 5 operator num2 5 plus 10 equals 15 let's try again I fixed the bug okay this problem looks a little bit more complex 5 plus 10 is oh it's not 40 point it's string here this operator plus cannot be 14 point let's try again 5 5 plus 10 equals 15 oh percent s looks better let me try because this add some mm, decimal part okay let's try again 5 plus 10 is 15 this is how this works um, because the floating point numbers are always printed like this with point zero this is how this works uh, if we want to achieve 10 plus 12 is 22 uh, we should format the, the output without this point zero which should be percent dot zero f it should be something like this five plus ten is fifteen but if this is five point five plus ten it's six <laughs> So it's better to leave this percent as and just to have point zero, which is which is not a problem. Five plus ten is fifteen. Okay, we managed to put this correctly, so I can check for minus, and this will be minus here. Plus minus multiplication the star will be multiplication I have also division and I have also percentage and let run this 5 divided by 2 a percent 2 is 1 okay but 5 divided by 2 is 2.5 and 5 multiplied by 10 is 50 works correctly so I assume we are done with this problem and it's not very short but that's life so let's go ahead with the solution i had in mind before the start of the oh but the operation is last 10 12 10 plus is last okay it's we can change the order uh here if we have plus we calculate the result if we have minus we calculate the result etc and finally we print number one operation number two result hmm. this works even better yeah this works better because we have only one uh, plus let me try double result is zero result equals to num1 plus num2 otherwise res 
written result as num1 minus num2. Here I have result equals to num1 multiplied by num2. Here I have the result as num1 divided by num2. And finally here I have result equals to num1 percent num2 result and after that I print the result. Works better. Uh, more clean code. Like 5 multiplied by 12 is 60. Works correct. So let's go ahead with the next problem. The next problem is called ATM, automated teller machine or the cash machine on, on the streets. It's about writing a problem which simulates an ATM withdrawal. So we have balance, withdraw request and limit. For example, we may have balance of $500. We may want to withdraw $50 and we have limit of $100 per day, for example, or per operation. And we print the withdrawal was successful is the balance is enough and the withdrawal is within the limits. We print the daily limit was exceeded if the limit is exceeded and we print insufficient availability if the balance isn't enough exactly in this order because sometimes we might have several errors in the same time <laughs> because uh, yeah but we should print one of these three uh, messages first we check this if it is not we check this if it is not we check this uh, this should not be daily limit this should be just limit uh, but this is an example we have 420 balance we withdraw trade 20 dollars we have limit 25 the withdrawal is less than the limit everything is successful we have 10 uh, balance we have 50 dollars requested and limit 20 so the limit is less than the requested and also the um, availability is also not enough but we print only the first error message and later we print the others uh, so if we have multiple errors we print only one error message this is by this is by design the problem statement so i'll create a class called atm uh, with the main method main i'll press ctrl tab to go at this uh, the previous problem solution i'll press ctrl c copy ctrl tab to go back ctrl v which is paste copy paste okay so i have the scanner i don't like to write it it will take more time so now i will need to read the input data balance withdraw limit so i have double balance equals to scanner dot next next double i'll copy this three times but once with throw with throw complex word and limit so the first case if i have enough balance balance is bigger or than the withdraw amount i have enough balance and the withdrawal request is less than or equal by the limit in this case everything is okay and i will print the withdraw well was successful this message otherwise if the i will check for the limit if the limit is if the withdrawer is bigger than the limit i will print this 
I try to withdraw more than more money than the limit. This is. And finally, if it happens that uh, insufficient availability, if I try to withdraw more money than the availability, than the balance, as out, okay, this is insufficient availability. Let's try to check whether this works correctly. 420 control V it doesn't work. I'll try to copy this to run this and paste. Oh, it's pause. It's not paste. Ah, control V withdrawal is successful. Okay. 10, 50, 20 control V limit was succeeded. And if I have uh, 500 and I want to withdraw mm, 600 and I have very big limit, the availability will not be sufficient. So this is the entire problem solution and we can go ahead with the solution I had in mind which is should be very similar. Read the number, check whether it, the balance is enough and the limit is okay and we print the withdrawal was successful. If the limit is reached we print that the limit was succeeded. It's not daily, I changed this because it's not correct to be daily. It's a per operation limit. Uh, sorry. And finally, oh, insufficient. Yes, because in all other cases, it will be, we should fall in one of these three cases. Either we have successful withdrawal or we have limit exceeded or we have insufficient availability. Yes, we don't need to put this, but it's better to have it. It's the code will be more readable. So we are done with this ATM solution and we have our next problem to be solved. It's about writing a problem to find the biggest among five numbers. We have five numbers, five integers and pre print the biggest of them. Here is five, here is minus one. Okay, so let's solve this problem. It's called biggest of five numbers. We go here, we increase the font with control and the mouse wheel. I print main method. I press control tab to copy this. Control C, control tab, control V, enter. And now I read the first number in number one equals to scanner dot next int. Okay. And I copy this five times, one, two, three, four, five. And now, when number one is the biggest, if number one is bigger by the number two and is bigger than the number three and number one is bigger than num four, and num1 is bigger by num5. In this case, okay, the biggest, what I should print, I should print just the number. The biggest number is num1. Do you agree? Num1 is bigger by num2, by this. Bigger than this, bigger than this, bigger than this. So it's bigger by all of the others. I print it. Uh, but it should be bigger or equal. Because if it's equal to some of the others, it's still the biggest, right? If we have, for example, here, um, five, five, 
five, three, we agree that num1 is the biggest and it's equal to the to this one. Okay. Otherwise, I'll have another check to check whether number two is bigger than number one, three, four, and five. Maybe I need to reduce the font. This is number two is bigger than one, three, four, five. Then number three. It should be bigger than num one, num two, four, and five. Num three is bigger than one, two, four, and five. The same for number five. Uh, number four, sorry. Four, four with three and four with five. So number four is bigger than one by two by three and by five. <laughs> it should not be bigger than itself. And in all other cases, it should be number five. Because if we have five numbers, definitely one of them is the biggest. Or we may have several biggest ones, but one of them will be bigger or equal than the others. So if it is not this, 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 it should be this. <laughs> right? Let's see whether this works or not. So I have, for example, 10, 1000, 20, 30, 40. It's 1000. If I have 5000, 1, 2, 3, 4, it's this. If I have 3, 4, 1000, 5, 6, it's 1000. The third, 1, 2, 3, 1000 is the fourth. Works correctly. I have should 3, 4, and 1000. So I matched the five, five cases. Uh, I had the first biggest, I had the second number to be the biggest, I had a test where, where the, the third was biggest, the fourth, and now in this test, the last one is the biggest. I, I can tr try with negative numbers, minus 10, minus 25, minus 15, minus 30, minus 5. Minus 5 is the biggest. Works correct, so this is my solution and it's, it's correct. Uh, let's see what I had in mind before the start of this lesson. It was very similar. If number 1 is bigger by, than all the others, so it's bigger than num2 in the same time bigger than num3, in the same time bigger than num4 and in the same time bigger than num5, it's the biggest. In the same time, else if, check the same for num2, check the same for num3, check the same for num4, and otherwise, num5 is biggest. I already demonstrated this to you, so we are done with this problem, and I'm happy that this was the last problem in these exercises. And in summary, uh, we demonstrated and explained that an if-else statement can be nested within another if-else statement, which is natural. If we have if is if else is a statement, it can be put everywhere where a statement can be put. Everywhere where we can pre put uh, system out printer and something, we can put if else. If in the else uh, statement we put another if else, it's a statement we can do. It. So we can nest statement if else inside another if else. So we can have if else, if else, if else sequence. And in some of these cases, we may have other if else, if else, if else sequence, like we already demonstrated. Combined with the and, or, and not, and brackets, 
uh, with these logical operators, we can uh, achieve more complex uh, conditional statements and we can check whether num1 is bigger than several other values with the AND or, um, or we can construct more complex expressions. Together with the nested tips, we can check almost everything. And the switch case statement is alternative to the if else where we have a single expression and we check it for many uh, values. It's very useful with multiple labels where we have we can check for many values and do the same thing uh, to avoid uh, something or something or something or something. So in summary. Uh, we already have uh, the knowledge and skills about building complex programming logic, branching logic, uh, which does different things depending on the different input uh, by checking with logical operators and uh, with uh, more complex conditional statements. Now we have um, good uh, knowledge and skills about using conditional statements in Java. In the next lesson, I will show you how to repeat pieces of code using whoops and this will be our next level of uh, uh, advancement in the coding skills. Did you like this code lesson? Do you want more? Join the learners community at softunit.org. Subscribe to my YouTube channel to get more free videos, tutorials on computer programming, Java, software engineering, and many others. Get free access to the practical coding exercises and the automated judge system for these code lessons to uh, evaluate your code from the exercises you write. Get help from the mentors and meet other learners. We, uh, we will answer your questions. And it's all free, completely free. So join now.